Had to have high, high hopes for a living. Shooting for the stars when I couldn't make a killing. Didn't have a dime, but I always had a vision. Always had high, high hopes. Hello, everyone. Darth Vegan here from Liverpool on the last day of the party conference. And yes, I've now grown up. As I walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain. I know that I'll never walk alone. <laughs> God of Liverpool. Brexit tragedy, Brexit tragedy. Oh, God of Steve Bray as well. In reading standards, a revolution still unfolding in our schools. And it's past time we brought that same focus to maths. One in four of our children leave primary school without the maths they need. That is a disaster. Maths is the language of the universe, the underpinning of our collective understanding. It cannot be left to the last years of school. And that's why I'm determined that Labour will bring maths to life for the next generation. Better training for teachers to teach with confidence and success. Better standards for our children so they're set up to succeed. Because be it budgeting or cooking, exchange rates or payslips, maths matters for success. And I want the numeracy of all our young people need for life and for work, to earn and to spend, to understand and to challenge. I want that to be part of their learning right from the start. Conference, high and rising standards, a richer curriculum woven through with speaking, listening and digital skills through every subject and every year of school. I caught him in seconds of hanging from his cabin bed because the head, headmistress had said, and I quote, he wasn't good enough for mainstream education. And since I had and one more recently in Shrewsbury from Keystone Academy. And we support, uh, we, we are teaching now, we've gone from 28 people to 70. Uh, their neurodiversities are a broad range, but what they do ex expelling is their own interests, their subject of interest. And what we aim to do is interweave that interest throughout the curriculum, and we ask that the Labour Party do the same. Many of our children cannot cope with mainstream education. They just, they're so badly traumatised by how they have been, uh, the saying is, uh, smacked on the, the a round head into a square hole. You lose so many fabulous parts of our young people, and they really struggle to come back. Many are trauma-based and are really struggling to survive, never mind be educated. So something that Keir said yesterday has really stayed with me. It's not that Rishi is lying, it's that he can't see the country before him. That's because the Tories don't send their, schools to, their children to schools like mine, schools where we're short staff every day because of our support staff are leaving for better pay jobs in retail, schools where we have children self-harming in front of us in our classrooms, because the waiting list for camps is two years. Schools where we have children going to sleep in our classrooms because they live in such overcrowded housing they are sharing beds with their siblings. Our head teacher is cleaning the school because the local private school has poached our caretaker. I talked to a young man in Wickham COP, 16 years old. He's been taught his chemistry GCSE in a class of 62 because the private school poached his chemistry teacher. We are working to deliver the skills programmes we need across our economy, including training in retrofitting of the broader green sector, equipping small businesses and individual workers throughout our country to level up our infrastructure and create jobs in the process. I am proud to represent my council in that work at our combined authority under our phenomenal Labour Metro Mayor, Dr Nick Johnson. The conference, we are being held back by a national government that refuses delegate to us the powers, crucially the funding, that we need to do it right. certain <coughs> that I will be dead. No career, no family, no opportunity. Cancer has robbed me of a promising future. Recently, I've been through chemotherapy and life-threatening emergency surgery, but this isn't the first time. I found myself 
in the caring hands of our NHS. Born at 28 weeks, I began my short life fighting for it in an incubator. I continue to fight by using every blessed window of wellness to live as fully as possible with as many marathons and ultra marathons as my drinking health allows. I am determined to make sure that the NHS doesn't fail people like Nathaniel anymore. crisis in front of us. 7.7 .7 million people waiting. The longest waiting list ever. And the audacity of the fifth Conservative Prime Minister in 13 years blaming NHS staff for the Tories of Digital Failure. Build our NHS so it's fit for the future. 
or train the next generation of nurses and doctors? Will ensure people will reliably get GP appointments again? And will support research to ensure future generations can benefit from cutting edge care like mine did? We won't just save the NHS from the Tories, we'll rebuild it for the 21st century. The NHS is a beautiful creation, a revolutionary social policy, a labour policy that shows how a society, society can truly care for those within it. But it's under threat. Earlier this year, the Tory MP for my area, Penniston and Snoxy, talked about an alternative healthcare funds model. It's the longevity of their life. And under this chaotic Conservative government, our social care system is on its knees. And people are actually burning through their, their savings to fund their own care. It's time for us to professionalise the work that our social care workers do. A Labour government will take our social care system right into the 21st century and recognise the value of unpaid carers and families that save this country millions of pounds every year. We continue to struggle along. The thing that burns in my head though is the state of the GP surgeries. When we went to the GP, it's like being packed like sardines in a tin can. Overworked doctors without the proper time, the resources, or the access to services for a proper diagnosis. By the time he had a diagnosis, it spread and it was terminal, and he wasn't given the fighting chance that he deserved. But today we have the technology and we have the capability to fight for a better NHS, and we have and we need the drive to do it. We, we have to bring an end to the postcode lottery that the NHS is built upon. Punitive system, starving the most vulnerable in our society. And that concludes the board's for annual Now, conference last year, our sister party in Australia won a majority government for the first time since 2007. <laughs> international guest speaker in just a moment but first we have a video message from Australia's Labour Prime Minister Anthony Alabanzi. Al <laughs> Albany. It's my pleasure to send a message of friendship and solidarity to all of the delegates in Liverpool for this year's Labour Conference. I have fond memories of attending the conference there in Liverpool a few years ago. In the UK, as in Australia, oh, Labour course. conferences showcase the great democratic tradition of our party and our movement. Because there, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you from camera. Conference. The war in Ukraine may not be in the news to the same extent as it was this time last year, but the borders of Europe and democracy is still under threat, and the brave people of Ukraine continue to fight. Labour stands resolutely with Ukraine and our NATO allies. It is therefore Alexander Korenenko. Um, the Deputy Speaker of the Ukrainian Parliament to address conference. United Kingdom, Central Africa. Thank you very much, Jacob. Every ballot, every page, and every word of support matters. Especially, I want to pay you deep respect from our soldiers from Benin. They have honor to see every two weeks when I travel. In time of this unprovoked aggression from Russia to Ukraine, every Nippon unit saving dozens of lives of power. Thank you. Next, other I know that Liverpool streets remember such stuff, but I don't wish so all you to hear that ever. Almost 
600 days of dozens of years of unconditionally supported UAE by the UK gives to the world a great example of such bridge view. Dear friends, I would like to say on this honorable stage about true fraternity <coughs> between our nations. We need to be united in our response against atoms of crucified Crimea, to disseminate propaganda and to destroy the Ukrainian nation in the genocidal war Russia is in. Conference. I want to share my conviction with you. This battle is not only about this battle is about our labels. It's about the whole world, it's about the humanity. To win it, we need to stay united. We need to think of it with a sense of urgency which arises from the fact that every day the best my brothers and sisters in Ukraine are sacrificing their lives for our peaceful life, for our To act in a constant way, we need to have a single desire, a single strategy for the world's end. We need to share the same object and contribute with our action to its achievement, the restoration of the 1991 borders include Crimea, guarantees of non-repetition, Ukrainian's membership, in a and a about your brilliant party. Labor was founded to uphold justice for British workers. In my opinion, justice is an excellent foundation for the development of our common vision for the end of Russian aggression and for our common peaceful future. Let's make justice prevail. Thank you so much. Woo! Now, it's threatened by soaring prices. Labour will switch on a new publicly owned company, Great British Energy, meaning energy security and lower bills, making families and businesses better off. This is a library card from one of Tito's schools, the one where she fell in love with poetry, because out of all her schools, there was one teacher who truly inspired her. Labour will break down the barriers to opportunity by putting a specialist teacher in every classroom. Funded by ending tax breaks for private schools. So <laughs> These are Nat's letters. All his appointments, all the cancellations. The waiting that changed his cancer from survivable to incurable. For now, he keeps teaching keeps playing for as long as he can. We've labeled it a bigger part of our process and start treatment for those days of days. Funded by closing the program for his tax record. Woo! So you know what you're saying. These But this rental doesn't feel like her. Despite saving and downsizing, Sam can't get on the property ladder. Owning your own home shouldn't be out of reach for working people. Labour will kickstart economic growth and get Britain building again with more people owning their own home and priority for first-time buyers. <laughs> this is where I'm going to Norm holds onto it now. Ranin used it to call 999 13 times in five months. Multiple times on the day her abuser attacked her and her mum. She was waiting on the phone when he killed them both. With Labour, trained abuse specialists will support 999 handlers. Funded by eliminating police waste, cutting drastically the level of violence against women and girls.
of them stood up, but they did fight each other. <laughs> Um, we had Mike and Gold complaining about the Tory tax burden. We had Reese Mogg complaining about the lack of economic growth. We had Jeremy Hunt complaining about civil service numbers. We had all of them complaining about runaway costs of HS2. It's astonishing. Who do these people think has been in charge these last 30 years? <laughs> was Priti Patel skipping the light bandango with Nigel Farage. <laughs> and now Farage is waltzing his way back into the Tory party. And Sunak too weak to stop him. And then there was Liz Truss too. Liz oh. She wants a second chance to outlast the lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> and crash and smash family finances all over again. Well, have you ever seen a political party, after 13 years in office, so silent on their record. As Keir reminded us yesterday, we all remember previous Labour Prime Minister outlining what we had achieved together in government, the winter fuel payment, the short start centres, the shortest waiting time, the minimum wage, you remember it. But after 13 years, but after 13 years in the after 13 years in the Tories, what of them? The economy crashed. Real wages stagnant. Mortgages up. 25 Tory tax rises. Schools at risk of collapse. Record NHS waiting lists. Universal credit cut. Half a million more children in poverty. <coughs> Rivers and beaches full of sewage. Mental health care in crisis. Councils going bust. Party gates with more raids in Downing Street than a beefer. Rising pensioner poverty. Record food bank use. Short start centres axed. Social care on its knees. Fire and it rehire. Billions lost to Tory cronies for useless PPE and dodgy loans. Seven reckless chancellors. Five hopeless prime ministers. That's the Britain they've been breaking. That's what we Home ownership. So. But many, so such a pipe dream under the Tories will be a reality with Labour. This is the change. This is the change a Labour government will bring. Mission led, focused on the country's priorities, with stability and sound finances the foundation, not the recklessness and chaos of another five Tory years, with Labour <coughs> government serving the people, not government serving itself. So, friends, when, as we pack up and say farewell to Liverpool for another year, let the message from this conference be clear that to all who yearn for change, that to all who voted Conservative in the past, but now see today how far this Conservative Party has moved away from you, to all those who love this country and know it can be so much better, <coughs> join us on our journey a brighter day. To every member and supporter watching at home, join us on this campaign. Put into action what it says on our membership card by the strength of our common endeavour, we achieve more than we achieve alone. So with our sights raised, let us dare to glimpse at the possibilities of the future. And with confidence and conviction, together, let's go out and win. Thank you. The people's flag is deepest red, is shrouded of Darmot dead, and there their limbs grew stiff and cold, their hearts blood died to its every fold. Them raise the scarlet standard high Beneath his shade we'll live or die Though cowards flinch and traitors sneer 
We'll keep the red flag flying here. Even some comfort swear we owe To bear it onward till we fall Come dungeons dark, oh gallows grim This song shall be our parting hymn and raise the scarlet standard high Beneath his shade we'll live or die Though cowards flinch and trade to sneer We'll keep the red flag flying here birthday and uh, the waitress by the way I found out her name it's Shelley but um, yeah there was, someone was having their 90th birthday and she, and, and she came out saying happy birthday and gave him a little cake wasn't that nice obviously she's a wonderful person but yeah Anyway, I'm now on, on my way to Lime Street Station. I'm not going home, but I'm seeing my friend. Uh, he's a little late. The bus was delayed. Oh dear. Step of this of the year of, um, you know, public transport in this country. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> on the other side of the <laughs> This is by the Tony Blair Rock Opera. Oh, it's by Harry Hill <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know who Steve Brown is, but... Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, when we, well, I've just been to the Labour Party conference as well. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, that was rather pleasant. <laughs> Probably the one time I've met up with him here and uh, something didn't go horribly wrong. Then again, he bought, got me to buy a car, which is not vegan. Damn it. But yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, no, no food, drinks, smoke, don't know why I'm admitting that, but I am, apparently, and, oh, it's 20 minutes to one in the morning, I'm not tired. Mad that <laughs> doesn't even feel that late. Well, probably because I'm not like I'm not actually tired. But yeah, as if you enjoyed this. Maybe thank you for subscribing, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Goodbye.